So, it's finally here, the HP Reverb G2. I know I've been extremely excited about this headset in particular, and I know a lot of you have been as well. I've seen hundreds of comments and questions about it in stream, and now I finally have it in hand. In case you don't know much about the headset, let me go over the basics. This is the Generation 2 of the HP Reverb, hence the name HP Reverb G2. The first Reverb came out last year, and even though the name and resolution are the same here, literally everything has changed on this headset. New and improved displays, four tracking cameras versus two, a valve design head strap that is extremely similar to the valve index, and same goes for the audio, the same great off-ear speakers as the index. And also, valve designed these lenses. Also, new are these controllers with an industry standard button layout. I've been using this headset non-stop since I got it earlier this week, and I have some interesting feelings about this headset. Just like always on this channel, this is a first impressions video, not a full review just yet. I like to have at least a couple weeks with a headset before I make a solidified review because things can definitely change. But these are the impressions from someone that no life's a Valve Index, and I will go over tracking, comfort, the viewing experience, and talk about a kind of big problem that I had here. To give some context, I have just about 2,000 hours on an index, and I feel like this is the perspective where we should be coming from. This headset, the Reverb G2, is an enthusiast device, and serves as either an upgrade from a Rift S or a similar headset, or or as a sort of side grade from an index. Whether you're hardcore into Sims, VR chat, or other games, or you're a VR productivity person, the question is up in the air whether the G2 is right for you. So just jumping right into it, the unboxing is pretty normal. No frills packaging, and in the box you get the headset, cable, power adapter, controllers, and a USB to USB-C adapter. And a DisplayPort Mini to DisplayPort adapter, so this can work with laptops. And some paperwork, of course. I will say for transparency's sake, this headset was sent to me to review by HP, and the box's seal was broken, which means that the headset was likely tested by HP before I got it, which is important to note. HP did not hide that fact, so I'm not going to hide it either. Also, the G2 comes with cables detached. You have to plug in the headset side yourself, which shouldn't be an issue, but there's a little cable clip on the back of the headset, and I broke it while routing the cable, and I thought I did something wrong, and I don't want to speak for other people, but turns out I'm not the only one. Mike, Cass and Sherry, and others have done the same thing. I did contact HP about the problem, and they said it was a bad batch of cable clips, and it's an issue that they're working on, and it should not be an issue at launch. But I will say, if you care about this cable clip, be extremely careful with it. As much as I love my index, Valve seems to have a hard time creating cable clips, because that also broke on my index. And, uh, well, Valve designed this head strap for the G2, too, so it's only fitting that the cable clip would have issues. On the actual software side, Windows Mixed Reality Portal picked up the headset quickly and I got all set up. Apparently, HP and Microsoft worked together with Valve to get Windows Mixed Reality Portal and SteamVR to work flawlessly with each other. Which is good because I personally have zero interest in actually using Windows Mixed Reality Portal. I just want to get to my content within SteamVR. So I downloaded the SteamVR for Windows Mixed Reality app within Steam and the transition was pretty fast and easy. Getting into Steam games was easy as well, just click it to launch it like always. And I gotta say, the visual experience with the G2 is fantastic. Probably, actually not probably, definitely the clearest display and lenses I've personally ever used in a VR headset. Looking at anything is really beautiful and the colors do pop, and this LCD panel has some pretty good contrast, better than the index for example. One thing I do in VR almost daily is stream, and that means I have a chat window open with tiny text that I'm reading while in VR. And so many times I screw up names just because sometimes it's kind of hard to read small text while in VR. But that sort of issue is gone with the G2. I can read it from really far away and the detail is kind of jaw-dropping. It blows my mind that we can have something this clear when just three years ago the Oculus Rift CV1 and HTC Vive were the industry standards. And those headsets honestly look like a muddy screen door compared to the G2. The clarity and displays are 
hands down the best part of this headset, and it is industry leading at this price. But I will say, this is not without compromises. The field of view on the G2 is not impressive, and going between the Index and G2 is very noticeable. I personally have always been someone that prioritizes a wider field of view over super high resolution, and if you're like me, I slam my lenses on my Index right up to my eyebrows just so I could get the highest FOV possible. And going to the G2, it's going to feel like you have binocular vision if you're used to the Index FOV. However, this isn't to say that the FOV is any worse than the Quest 2 or Vive or Rift. It is pretty standard. It's not worse than any of those headsets. But if you're looking at specifically the Index versus Reverb G2, it's really a matter of picking which is more important to you. Better visual clarity or better field of view and refresh rate. For me, it's kind of a mix-up. I love the clarity. Edge to edge, there is no screen door effect. God rays are minimal most of the time, and the sweet spot is pretty large, and there's manual IPD adjustment from 60 to 68 millimeters, but being able to see more on the index is really nice still. One thing that is not a mix-up though is tracking quality and controllers. I'm gonna talk hard about tracking in just a second, but first I want to talk about these controllers. These are new for Windows Mixed Reality, and the buttons feel pretty nice. They're clicky, the thumbstick feels smooth and is not grainy, the triggers do their job, but I had an issue. Out of the box, my left controller's trigger just didn't work. Now, I'm right-hand dominant, so it's actually not that often that I even use that trigger, but I figured it out whenever I was trying to get full body tracking working in VRChat, and in order to confirm your calibration, you have to press both triggers, and well, I was stuck in T-Pose forever because one trigger just wasn't working. I did contact HP about it, and they immediately sent me another pair, and since then, my experience with the G2 has been just fine. Everything worked on the controllers. Just, I hope that I got really, really unlucky, and I really hope that this is not going to be a widespread issue with this headset and the controllers. Maybe I just got a bad controller, stuff happens, but yeah, that did happen, and that was one of my first experiences with this headset. Like I said, it could have been a one-off, or this could be widespread, I guess we'll find out. Another huge complaint that I have with these controllers is the lack of capacitive sensors on the controllers. You don't think you'll miss it until it's gone and I realized just how much having those sensors connects me to the game. In case you didn't know, just about every VR controller out there has capacitive sensors on the buttons, so it can sense whenever your fingers are on them, but not pressing them necessarily. One thing that was seriously affected by this is something like VRChat. VRChat seriously relies on those sensors to make gestures and to change your facial expressions, and that's either something that's going to have to be seriously remapped, or it's just something that you won't be able to do with these controllers. The new controllers may have industry standard button mapping, but it does not meet the industry standard due to this lack of capacitive sensors. If you don't care about that though, the ergonomics are fine, the battery life hasn't been noticeably bad, and even though the tracking ring is large, it hasn't interfered with my gaming experience yet. But now, let's get into tracking. So here's what I've played most of so far with this headset. I've played a few hours of Beat Saber, I did a bunch of VR chat, I played Population 1, and then I played Pavlov for a few hours. And how good is the tracking? Well, it's not terrible. It's far better than anything like the HTC Vive Cosmos, and it's better than any Windows Mixed Reality headset I've used in the past, but it's not nearly as good as something like the Rift S, Quest, or Quest 2, or Vive, or Index. The tracking volume isn't all too bad, I'll show you where you lose tracking. Basically, if your hands are either in front of you or anywhere to the direct sides, then the tracking quality is fine, but above your head and you lose it quickly. And and the worst offender is having the controllers down at your sides. I notice this especially in Beat Saber and VR Chat. A lot of times if I'm just standing there and my hands are at my sides, the controllers will lose tracking and my avatar gets all stiff. Now this makes sense, there are four cameras on the headset, two in front and one on each side. So it just can't see anything below, and it's a big dead spot. You have to be looking at your hands for them to be tracked essentially if they're not on the sides. Also, the occlusion was not great. Playing Population 1 or Pavlov and holding guns two-handed made the controller in front drift quite a bit as it lost tracking, but is it usable? Absolutely. Is it optimal? No. However, it is an upgrade over anything that Windows Mixed Reality has had before, and I'm probably spoiled by the Quest 2 and Quest and Index tracking. They are noticeably better. And I should note that these tracking algorithms get better over time with updates. If you compare the Quest tracking at its launch to its tracking now, it's significantly better. So I can imagine that the tracking 
tracking will improve in future updates, but until I see it, the tracking is definitely usable, but not great, and will be frustrating in many games, especially if you're used to other tracking methods. In terms of high-level Beat Saber play, though, I think it is usable, but probably not the best option available. Basically, usable, but could be better. Also, I want to throw this in regarding microphone quality. It doesn't sound bad, but the Index does have it beat. Here's a microphone test between the Index Quest 2 and Reverb G2. This is a microphone test with the HP Reverb G2. Testing the microphone on the Oculus Quest 2. Testing the microphone on the Valve Index. I did have to decrease my output volume to 50% for it to sound right. Apparently there's some weird overblown bug that I haven't personally experienced, but Eric for President has, and here's a clip of what that looks like. Oh, with a real mic can say it. Oh. This is something that you'll have to adjust in settings, and it does seem like a software glitch at this moment. The onboard audio is fantastic. The Index and Reverb G2 share the same amazing audio drivers, and they're honestly best in class for spatial audio, clearness, bass, and presence on any VR headset. If you care a lot about audio, this is a huge selling point. I love these speakers. They're literally the exact same thing as on the Index with a slightly different housing. So my impressions. I still have a lot more testing to do, but generally I'm very impressed with the video quality and clarity. The comfort and audio are top notch, but the controllers and tracking quality leave much to be desired. If you're hardcore into games like Pavlov or Population 1 or Onward, the tracking is just not optimal. If you're big into VR chat, well, same, plus you don't have capacitive sensors. But if you're into Sims or you play games a little more casually or you don't really care about being super competitive in something like Onward or Pavlov, or you don't mind working with the tracking, then this is a really good headset still for the most part. For me though, and this is what you'll see more of in the actual review, is just using the headset alone and using base stations to use knuckles and vibe trackers. That eliminates the worst qualities of the G2, which is the tracking and controllers, and replaces it with the Index's best qualities. And if you want that exceptional video quality that you see on the G2, that's not a bad option and it's pretty easy to do. Maybe I'll make a video on how to do that in particular because that's probably the best way to experience this headset. Knuckles, vibe trackers, base stations, and the G2 as the headset. Will it replace my Index forever? I'm not sure yet, but is the G2 and Index killer in general? I don't think so personally. I still have to get way more time with it, but as of now, I feel like it falls short in too many areas to make the Index irrelevant. The answer isn't cut and clear between the two if you're trying to decide between them, just like how the answer isn't clear between the Quest 2 and this headset. It's not a clear recommend over anything, unless you are a specific type of user. If you prioritize clarity over everything, then, well, the answer is... Uh, clear, no pun intended, but if you care about literally anything else, then that answer gets a lot harder. So far, the G2 is not a bad headset, and I'd actually say it's pretty good. And if the side grade for Index owners or Vive owners is something you want to do, I'd probably recommend that. And for this reason, I wish that HP actually sold the headset alone without the controllers for cheaper for that exact reason, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. So I'm going to spend another couple hundred hours with this headset and see how my ideas change on it, using both the Valve Index controllers and the controllers it comes with. And I will be streaming with the G2 on Twitch today, so come on by and ask any questions that you have. Also, join up in my Discord server and we'll talk more about it there as well. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Benji, Biz, CPCJ79, Dented Melon, Elijah, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, KR, Chaotic, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, True Killa, Very Evil Shadow, Suwu Side, and XD Cloud. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.